the GOP might be racist. Um, I know, I know, it's shocking. Uh, I got this from a place called The Political Wire. They're citing a study from, uh, where was it? The Pacific something. I wrote down my notes. Horrible intro. Should I do again? Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. Fuck um, it. Fuck it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Got it from the Pacific Standard Report is what it's called. Research, and this is a quote, research on Iowa counties that swung from Obama to Trump indicate that GOP success was driven far more by sexism and racism than by economic anxiety. Um, long story short, Trump's whole campaign at the time, I would argue, was based on um, fear mongering and creating issues, literally creating issues that sounded scary and then promising to eliminate them. So it's not that surprising to me that we have some yokels, let's put it politely, in Iowa that um, didn't like Obama or Obama, as I've heard, uh, didn't want to vote for a woman, um, you know, things of that nature, who then most likely voted for Trump because he said some really cool things as far as they were concerned, you know, anti-immigrant rhetoric, racist rhetoric, um, building walls, uh, I'm for the little man. You know, other great such lines that uh, all turned out to be total bullshit. So I, I just I, I don't know if there's a whole lot to say about this. I mean, are you surprised? Is the GOP, you know, really racist or what do you think? No, I mean, I, I, I've been saying on the channel, you know, since the beginning that I increasingly am convinced that not only is racism entrenched in the American right, but also neo-Nazism as consistently now the right has refused to openly condemn groups like that and there was the the infamous there's good people on both sides comment that was made in response to charlottesville where there were not good people on both sides that was not that was that was a pivotal moment i think where it was a really powerful action of normalization on Trump's part. And there's there's been many more moments like that where he's perpetuated a lie <clears throat> or created a false equivalency that his supporters then pick up and use to justify their hate. And so, no, I'm not surprised by this. And Iowa, I have 27, 28 years experience living in the state. And... Yep, it's racist. And, and I think it, it's worth noting that, uh, if nothing else, this, this this should be an example that I could point to where um, I don't necessarily support Democrats either, because as this points out, they're not all good people, or they're not all um, good people on both sides or, or what have you. I'm not always a Democrat or a Republican, or I, I'm mostly an egalitarian, and so... I don't switch sides. I vote for the side that I feel is going to promote egalitarian ideals, be it left, be it whomever, independent. Um, and I, I, I just, I can't imagine a scenario in which in 2016, I was going to say, well, I guess I'll vote for Trump. Um, you and I talked about it a lot the, the days before voting. And we were both just super torn because like I could not vote for Trump. Um, I just couldn't do it. And, and I can't imagine a scenario in which I could be enticed to have done that because I know what's right. I mean, I know that the egalitarian ideals are probably the best, if not the best. Can you think of a situation that would entice you to switch? You know, how, what would get you to vote for Trump in 2020? 